Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Klaus or Diego from the Umbrella Academy, and like and subscribe for stronger mains next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Lionel, leader of the Thundercats. He's a beefy lead with a magical transforming sword designed to sell toys in the 80s. He's He-Man for furries. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa! Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to cultivate a personality with leadership skills to bring the team to victory. Next, we need a magic sword that takes our already solid fighting ability to ridiculous levels. Finally, we'll also find stuff with the sword. But if you're looking to find some security for your data while you're browsing the internet, why don't you check out today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a virtual private network, meaning that it encrypts your data, keeping it safe from hackers, identity thieves, and corporations. With servers in countries all over the world, you can even use Surfshark VPN to get around region-blocked content and watch any country's version of any streaming service. Whatever you want to watch is up to you. While it's keeping you safe, it also improves your quality of life. With the clean web feature blocking out ads you don't want to see, and a cookie blocker to stop those cookies from slowing down your computer. As a reminder, Surfshark works on an unlimited number of devices. Smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, browsers, gaming consoles, whatever's running the internet, Surfshark's gonna keep you safe and you only need one subscription. And you get 83% off that subscription and three free months when you use the link in the description and offer code TULOCK at checkout. That's surfshark.deals slash TULOCK so you can get started today protecting your internet and browsing whatever you want. Now, back to the video. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma will be number one. Your biggest asset is your inspirational abilities or the magical sword that can do anything, either or. Strength next, pretty sure they just painted a He-Man action figure a different color and called it lion -O, so you need some muscles. Dexterity after that, you've got feline agility and don't wear the heaviest of armor. Cats hate wearing clothes. Follow that up with constitution, you need it to resist the necrotic spells Mumra is pumping out, and even if you fail the save, you'll have a bit more HP. Wisdom is a bit low. Sure, cats have sharp senses. We just need other stuff more, and we'll dump intelligence. We don't really need it. Lion-O will do some clever maneuvers, but that's on you as a player. History checks don't let you outmaneuver people. Hey, let's make a Leonin today. It's the first one in the channel. Sound the alarms and reset the variant human countdown. Leonins get plus two charisma and plus one dexterity. Tasha told me I can change the stats if I want, so if you've got an issue, become a powerful witch, and I'll consider your opinion. You get 60 feet of dark vision, some claws that deal one deep four plus your strength modifier and slashing damage, but the most unique feature is the daunting roar. That lets you use your action to force a wisdom saving throw on a creature within 10 feet of you. Failing that, they're frightened until the end of your next turn. Leonin are basically tabaxi with this instead of feline agility. And if I'm totally honest, feline agility is so much better. But like tabaxi, you get another skill too. Athletics will make your muscles bigger. I think that's fair. I'd like to use the noble background, but we need acrobatics and persuasion. We can grab history from our starting class. That class is warlock, by the way. A little weird, but most of Lionel's powers come from the Sword of Omens, a sentient blade, and oh wait, I gotta do the skills. History and intimidation. Anyway, Sword of Omens, magic sentient sword that gives you magic stuff. That's a hex blade, folks. That'll make you a hex warrior, letting you pick a weapon to fight with using your charisma modifier. That's currently your best stat, and now it's gonna be the first thing we invest in when we get more abilities for improvements. You can also use a hex blade's curse to put the sword's eye on a target, letting you deal extra damage against them equal to your proficiency bonus, critically hit them on a 19 or a 20, and heal an amount equal to your warlock level plus your charisma modifier when you slay the enemy or in the case of mumra like re-slay the enemy fear cantrip's booming blade will put some thunder 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 on your thundercat sword dealing a d8 of damage to a creature you hit with a melee weapon attack if they move in their next turn eldritch blast is a solid sword laser shooting a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 force damage for first level spells hex blades get shield letting you add five to your ac as a reaction for a sword force field cause fear is like a better roar forcing a wisdom saving throw that uses your charisma modifier Failing that, a creature is frightened of you for up to a minute. I think this is generally considered an evil spell, but if you use it on villains, it's heroic. Second level warlocks get invocations, special presents from your sword that make you cooler than all the other cats. Agonizing Blast adds your charisma modifier to the damage of your sword lasers, always a nice little buff. Eldritch Mind gives you advantage on concentration saves, making sure that once we inevitably get some more sword buffs, they'll stay as buff as the cat with the sword. For this level spell, Wrathful Smite adds an extra d6 of psychic damage to a weapon attack you make and frightens the 
creature if they fail a wisdom saving throw for up to a minute depending on your concentration lions are scary a lion with a claymore terrifying third level warlocks can actually get a claymore if they choose the pact of the blade letting you make a melee weapon you can summon to your hand as an action you're proficient with it no matter what it is so a great sword is now an option dealing 2d6 slashing damage it's also magical in terms of overcoming resistances drop the eldritch mind invocation here for the improved packed weapon to add one to the attack and damage rolls of your packed weapon and let you use it as a spell casting focus now shooting beams out of the sword isn't flavor it's like a cat's favorite preparation of fish it's raw you can also learn second level spells branding smite adds 2d6 radiant damage to one attack and prevents a creature from turning invisible mostly here for the extra saucy damage though fourth level warlocks get another ability score improvement bump your charisma modifier to hit harder with your sword your sword lasers pretty much everything you hit with is charisma you're only working your glamour muscles you don't work out your core totally arm heavy all buys and tries for this level spell enthrall will get everyone looking at your muscles forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures that can see you giving them disadvantage on perception checks to see other creatures if they fail for a minute perhaps you're chanting thunder thunder thundercats oh could be distracted now that the sword is soused up enough in my opinion let's get better at swinging it we'll do that as a paladin giving you divine sense to detect celestial fiends and undead in the area and amount of times per long rest equals your charisma modifier hey that's another sort of omens ability from paladin i wonder if that's going to happen frequently it is lay on hands heals a creature from pool of healing equal to five times your paladin level it doesn't have to be some grand healing thing it could just be one cat kneading the other cat gently for like way too long slowly turning you into a biscuit now now i know some people are wondering why we didn't hit fifth level of warlock for a thirsting blade and an extra attack but my reasoning is this then we'd get two extra attacks before this is over and hitting really 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 hard but don't worry you're still going to be able to bring the thunder cat with a booming blade that now adds a d8 of thunder damage to the initial hit and you can shoot two eldritch blast beams instead of one with your action so don't worry lion is still dealing damage second level paladins can deal even more damage with the great weapon and fighting style to re-roll ones and twos on your damage die with a two-handed weapon that's even better with a great sword since you're rolling 2d6 that doubles your chances to re-roll you also get paladin spells like divine favor to add a d4 of radiant damage to your weapon attacks for a minute depending on your concentration thunderous smite adds 2d6 to the damage of your next weapon attack and forces a strength saving throw on the creature knocking them prone if they fail melee attacks against the prone target will have advantage hexblade's curse doubles your crit chances and crits double all the damage die so if you knock someone down then hit them with a boom booming blade and a divine smite that's going to be pretty huge oh divine smite adds 2d8 radiant damage to a weapon attack by spending a spell slot even though it is not a spell or 3d8 to fiends and undead you can also add another d8 with higher level slots so bonus action thunderous smite booming blade and a second level warlock slot on divine smite adds up to 4d6 plus 5d8 plus 7 damage at this point or around 39 with a single hit depending on how you roll that's pretty meaty third level paladins can choose a sacred oath oath of glory is the best for leading the team giving you two options for a channel of divinity inspiring smite lets you distribute 2d8 plus your paladin level in temporary hp after you hit a creature with a smite bolstering the resolve of the other cats peerless athlete gives you advantage on athletics and acrobatics checks doubles your carrying capacity and adds 10 feet to the distance of a running long jump personally i like inspiring smite more but if you just need some quick olympian level athletics peerless athlete does great work you also get two more spells for free guiding bolt fires a ranged spell attack that deals 4d6 radiant damage and gives the next person attack the creature advantage on their roll that's even more teamwork with a more lasery laser sword heroism makes a creature immune to frightening and gives them temporary hp equal to your charisma modifier every round that's borderline bardic levels of inspiration but unfortunately we will not be barding today this is thundercats not jellical cats fourth level paladins get another ability score improvement or feat the skill expert feat gives you plus one to a skill like charisma to cap it off another skill like investigation to make up for your lower intelligence and expertise in a skill like athletics so we really don't need to invest in strength at all that means more feats there was a lot of creative fan art i saw of lion and it had a lot of feet too fifth level paladins get an extra attack letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action keep in mind using booming blade is a full action so that's gonna only be one attack but you get to decide if you want one giant smash or two very large smashes you also get second level paladin spells enhance ability is free from the glory list giving a creature advantage on skill checks of a certain type if you choose strength their carrying capacity is also doubled if you choose dexterity they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less if you choose constitution they get 2d6 temporary
temporary HP. Encourage your team however you like, but dexterity will help the Thundercats land on their feet. Cats are pretty good at that. Locate object lets you find a specific object or objects of a generic type within a thousand feet of you. Hey, that's another Sword of Omens ability. Sixth level paladins become amazing leaders with the aura of protection. Letting your allies add your charisma modifier to their saving throws. Part of being a good leader is leading yourself, so you get those benefits as well, making the lowest save you have intelligence at plus five. It's basically like you're good at it. Seventh level glory paladins get their team in gear with the aura of alacrity, increasing your walking speed by 10 feet and increasing the walking speed of allies who start their turn within five feet of you by 10 feet as well. Gosh, I wish we went to Baxi for feline agility. This would pair so nicely together. Just do that at home, but I gotta stay accurate. Otherwise people will yell at me for being inaccurate. They still will. I can't, I can't win. But you can't lose at the eighth level of paladin, especially if you grab the great weapon master feat, letting you take a negative five penalty to your attack rolls with a heavy weapon to add 10 to the damage rolls and make an attack with a heavy weapon as a bonus action after you land a critical hit or drop a creature to zero HP with your action. Improved packed weapon alleviates this a little bit and lets you make a massive hit pairing with divine smite, booming blade, and a bonus action smite together. It really puts the thunder in Thundercats. Ninth level paladins can learn third level spells. Glory paladins get haste for free, doubling your movement speed, adding two to your AC, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, or make one more attack. Pairing this with aura of alacrity, you get to go super duper fast and you guarantee that you make two attacks even if one of them is with booming blade. Blinding smite adds 3d8 radiant damage to your next weapon attack and forces a constitution saving throw on a creature you hit, blinding them if they fail or up to a minute depending on your concentration. Reflecting things with the omen sword is a cool move, but I don't know if it's worth concentrating on over the huge suite of buffs that is haste or just a 4d8 divine smite. 10th level paladins get aura of courage, making creatures within 10 feet of you immune to frightening. Obviously, that includes you as well. Not sure how accurate it is to have cats that can't be afraid of things. My cat jumps a little when I hit the space bar and she's sitting on my lap. 11th level paladins get improved divine smite, adding a permanent d8 of radiant damage to all of your weapon attacks, making haste all the more valuable of a spell and kind of discouraging booming blades. 12th level paladins get another ability score improvement. We don't really need anything else. We could grab Warcaster, but you've got a plus six constitution save throw already. I'm not too worried about concentration. Let's just grab the tough feet for two extra HP for every level you have and every level you get after this. Hexblade Warlock mixes so ridiculously well with Paladin that you can really go nuts on the feats. 13th level Paladins can learn fourth level spells. Locate creature lets you find creatures of a vague type or specific creature. I think you're looking for Thundercats. Did you check behind the TV? Sometimes they just hang out behind the TV. 14th level Paladins get Cleansing Touch, letting you remove the effect of a spell on a creature without a saving throw or skill check an amount of times per long rest equal to your charisma modifier. It's such a great way to shrug off nasty effects a mummy lord wants to drop on you. Kind of weird that your nemesis is a mummy. I've seen hieroglyphs. Mummies should love cats. 15th level glory paladins get glorious defense, letting you leap to protect your fellow cats within 10 feet of you and add your charisma modifier to their AC as a reaction. If this makes the attacker miss, you can even make an attack against that attacker. You can do this a number of times equal to your charisma modifier, which hey, we focus that pretty hard. So if you're in a solo fight against your hexblade target, you can add five to your AC, make them miss, then hit them with a greatsword that deals 2d6 plus 1d8 plus 22 damage. Whoops. For our capstone, I think fudge it. We don't need another ability score. And fifth level warlocks get another invocation. Eldritch Smite lets you add 3d8 force damage to a weapon attack by spending a warlock spell slot and knocking them prone if they're huge or smaller for advantage on the follow-up. That's what I'd like to use your third level slots on. I don't really need any warlock spells. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, this is a Nova build. I don't give a toot about power building Nova damage, but it happens with Lion O. With haste, you can deal 6d6 plus 63 slashing damage, 17d8 radiant damage, and 6d8 force damage in a single round for 173 with medium rolls, assuming you don't crit. You're also nice and defensive. With 17 AC in medium armor, 23 five times per day with glorious defense, punishment if that makes someone miss, and a plus four minimum to all of your saving throws, and around 170-ish HP to stay safe. Finally, you're fast with extra movement speed from aura of alacrity and haste to get where you need to go. For weaknesses, your ranged options are limited. No, they're not. You have Eldritch Blast. You're dependent on radiant damage. No, 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 no. Slashing and force from Eldritch Blast. Um, your roar isn't super duper effective from from uh from Leonin. Your intelligence is bad for non-history and investigation-based intelligence check. And third thing, your claws 
can't be hex weapons, so they're not as good as your god sword. I'm stretching. You have a god sword. Hexblade Paladin is a ridiculously strong combo and will surely bring the Thundercats to victory. Just watch out for, uh, honestly nothing. This cat's busted. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Klaus or Diego from the Umbrella Academy and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.